Hey, I'm Simone, and I'm here with Pat and Brian, and it is the final day of E3. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about some of our favorite games that we've seen at the show so far. Pat, I want you to start us off, because you're the least winded from running here. Uh, you mean, I think, well, first of all, thank you for congratulating on my excellent cardiovascular health. He is the healthiest of all uh, of us. Spider-Man. 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 Why Spider-Man? Spider-Man, I don't know. Spider-Man? It's just like, I, I, had, I had little or no expectations for it. I haven't really played or uh, super enjoyed an Insomniac game in the past. I didn't even have an appointment to see it. I went to go see Last of Us and then I was in the Sony lounge afterwards and I ended up waiting about 20 minutes because I saw the swinging and I was like, I need to try that swinging. And now I just want to be doing that for the rest of my life. You told me the other day that Spider-Man 2 is kind of the game that everybody, the, the holy grail of Spider-Man games, yes, yeah. as it were. Yeah. So how does it compare to that for people who might be fans of that game? Sure, yeah. The, the, the swinging is a bit simplified from that, but like, because in that one you had individual control of, you could have, you could, you know, say right strand, left strand, and you could swing along that way. But uh, the, you don't have that level of control anymore, but you still feel like you are completely in control of where in your arcs you're letting go of stuff and the sense of momentum and speed is just like super intoxicating. Yeah, yeah. Um, I had about five minutes to play Spider-Man right yeah. before we started shooting this video and I was really impressed with how he feel, you can feel the weight yes, of Spider-Man swinging and the, the arc of him curving through the air. Yeah. And all the, it, it is very simplified, like you said, like he does his little flips and animations and stuff, like mm -hmm. com what feels like completely independently from what I'm doing, which is holding the trigger and just like waiting for the web to catch something. But it does still feel meaningful to play. Yeah. I, it's really, uh, I want to spend hours doing it. I, I know that the webs are, you know, they, you need to actually be below the level of a building to do it because they're not just attaching to random fixed points in space. Yeah, they're actually yeah. clipping onto like pieces of the building, but then even the mobility when you are o moving over buildings, you know, zipping over mm -hmm. rooftops using that mechanic and uh, the wall running the is, wall running. is, is you know, you can, there, there's no limit to it. You can just run all the way up a skyscraper uh, and it feels really good. Yeah. For me, I think I want to spend more time with the combat because the web sling, the, the web swinging was immediately understandable to me. Yeah. I had a little more trouble getting into the combat, but again, I only played for about yeah. five minutes. Um, and, but it did feel a little button mashy. Brian, tell me about in your in your new voice. Well, I've spent tell me about, your favorite game. about the entirety of E3 yelling about Ridley finally being Super Smash Brothers, oh, yeah. um, and I've lost my voice because of it. But you it's I have learned my Don't lesson. Be excited about things. Ever again. But Super Smash is definitely the best game I got a chance to play. It is gonna get me back into Smash. I took a break during the Wii U uh, just because I didn't have a Wii U. But I think that this is going to give people. Um, exactly what they want from Smash if you're just a casual player and if you're in the competitive scene all of the little nitty-gritty stuff that they've put in is gonna be so much more fun the fact that they have Omega levels uh, for every single one of the yeah. stages Omega and battlefield levels for exactly yeah. it's going to make it uh, infinitely more fun because then you're gonna be able to play on the difficult fields with better music yeah. than battlefield because I don't like that music um, it's ju it just felt so smooth but game I haven't played, but gameplay I have seen, and probably the game I'm most excited for is Cyberpunk 2077. It looks just as good as you want it to. So w when you go to these E3 demo things, I, I saw Last of Us, I saw Ghost of Tsushima, they're more or less identical to like the stage presentations. You, you're, you find yourself questioning a lot, is this actual gameplay or is this just like somebody moving from point to point in this thing? You said that they did a lot of stuff to try to get I very clearly convince you otherwise. I sat next to the person who had the Xbox controller in their hand yeah. uh, and he accidentally ran his car into a wall um, and I'm pretty sure he like apologized. He was like, oh, sorry, and then went continue doing his thing. He was legit legitimately playing the demo um, and the fact that it went from a trailer however many years ago to a trailer a few days ago to me seeing 50 minutes of gameplay and gameplay that was not only in depth but showed all of the different ways he could have played was so so impressive yeah and there's something to the fact that it feels like a pen and paper RPG they don't have you uh, choosing your own 
like class in the very beginning. It's uh, they they described it as kind of a uh, developing class structure where depending on what things you put into your body, different cybernetics, you become a different class as you go, uh, and you don't necessarily recognize it. So you could be a hacker, or you could be like this person, a cyber ninja. We got to see their uh, spider arms come out of their arms, just like in the original trailer. So mm -hmm. that's in the game. It looks incredible. So what's the, like the actual actual like combat look like? Is it is it shooting? It's, is it it's like... a first person shooter? First um, person? It's first person. Really? The whole thing, the is, whole first thing is first person, except for if you hop in a car, it can be third. Um, but the wow, it's, it's I had a, no. It's first person, but it looks uh, about as fluid as I don't know if, if you would say like I'm sure everyone will be comparing it to Deus Sex and everything like that. Yeah. The, it it is very immersive and uh, plays from the. Looks really good. Cool. And that's about all I can say for the rest of the day. I've used all of my voice. Bye, Brian. Bye, Brian. So I just spent about an hour looking at Media Molecule's dreams, and I came into E3, for the last few years, I've been kind of a skeptic about that game because it's hard for me to believe that in 2018 you can build a community of people who will be super enthusiastic about building levels in a game, and that's kind of seems to be what Dreams is going to rely on for its survival. But I did have a chance to mess around with some of the level creating tools and play some of the levels that Media Molecule created, and it's I'm still, I still hope that the community will be there making shit, but just, it's so charming. The levels that Media Molecule created have the exact same charm that is in Tearaway, that is in the first two little Big Planet games. The controls, unfortunately, also felt a little bit uh, floaty in the same sense. Uh, but the diversity of what they showed me in terms of the art was very impressive. Like there was a level that was a lot more like smooth sci-fi art versus a level that was a lot sketchier, sort of like soft looking teddy bear art for lack of a better description. And it was all created in their game engine, which yeah. is bonkers. Um, and then the last thing that they showed me was some of the level creation and actually some of the music creation which I am not a musician. I have never made music in my life. And they sat me down with this sort of, you use a PlayStation controller and you mash buttons and you can mash buttons for, for different instruments um, and change the octave and stuff. And we just sat there and he said, just mash some buttons and we'll put a drum track under it. And it somehow made a song, which I don't truly understand, they but it actually you. sounded they, they good. They tricked you into thinking you're a musician. They did. The and fact now is, that's what all musicians do. I Just don't believe job. that. Yeah, no, we're all just <laughs> magic buttons. Yeah. All right, well, stay tuned out. for my album. It'll drop on SoundCloud next week. Uh, this is my last video at Polygon. It's not, I'm sorry, I can never leave. I, I don't have any marketable skills. But, um, so, Alex Horn, who gave me the demo, told me that when they launched Little Big Planet, the, their big fear was that nobody would make levels for it, and it would kind of just be the game that they had created, and then it would die. Um, but that they were very impressed because the community did flock to that and did create a bunch of levels. And that is why they feel optimistic about Dreams. And I'm feeling somewhat more optimistic as well, although the tools are so in-depth and you can do so much. So that kind of, that would be my main concern is just how much time it would take to have true mastery over that. But it is true that you can create something very simple very quickly. So I, I think I am more enthusiastic about that game now than I was. It was super cute. That was a lot. Yeah. Talk very uh, fast. It's okay. Like, like the actual like making stuff. Like, what does it feel like? Is it is it you're moving shit around in 3D space in this one? It's all 3D space. Even the music was 3D. Like there was the box that I was kind of like just tapping buttons on, but yeah. then I could zoom through it and turn around, and I could see like notes floating in 3D space behind it. It was so unnecessarily like visually intensive which was very cool and it's all so it's all 3d space you're dragging a cursor around the screen and like copying stuff shrinking moving in 3d space um it, it was relatively intuitive once somebody explained it to me yeah when i was messing around with it before somebody came over and explained it to me uh i could not figure out how to actually make things but okay. i could figure out how to play levels uh the, play the the like gameplay which was which was pretty fun so nice yeah I'm optimistic. It, it's it's definitely not, I think, something that I'm in love with on the level that you're in love with Cyberpunk or you're in love with Spider-Man. 
but it did impress me a lot, a lot more than I think the trailers have because looking at the, the trailers and what they've shown so far, it's really hard to understand what it is and why it would be engaging. And having played it now, I, I do understand more mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. yeah. I have no idea if anybody's gonna buy it. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. I, it's hard to say. I really, I want it to because I, I love everything that that studio has put out. I think they do things that are very charming and very unique and very special, but we'll see. So those were some of our favorite games from E3 2018. It is the last day and we will be going home very soon to lie in bed forever, but stay tuned because we will have a lot more videos coming out of E3 and in the future. Make sure you subscribe to our channel to see all of those. Thank you.